I always joke with them. I was like, yo, if they need like a a Walmart version, half Japanese version of you over there, just let me know and I'll I'll take some of that money. <laughs> I'll take some of that money from you, dude. I was like, I won't cost as much. You know what I mean? Like I won't take any of the if you need a commercial where you need to speak Japanese, uh, take any of that from me, but let me get some of that cheese. Hey, everybody, and welcome to episode number 188 of the Chris Rose Rotation, a production of John Boy Media, and he has become one of the most popular people in all of baseball, probably the entire world. He is Cardinals outfielder Lars Newtbar. My goodness. I mean, I, I'm surprised I didn't have to go through 18 PR people to get to you because you know your social media has blown up i'm surprised you don't have your own youtube channel and everything else has this ride been wild or what dude you didn't go through my uh my media people over in japan to clear this or anything you didn't, you didn't have to do that huh so nobody made contact with you i i tried to but they okay. were like you know what no 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 there's six levels before we actually get the <laughs> right, request right. Going. yeah right no it's i mean it, obviously you know that wbc ride was was pretty unbelievable and uh you know, kind of being Shohei's teammate. That's, I guess that's kind of what it does to you, and, you know, playing in Japan and everything like that. So, um, you know, it was, it was really a cool experience. Um, something that I'll never forget for sure. And then topping it off with a gold medal, man, it was, um, man, it, am I just glad to have been a part of that ride? Well, we'll get to it. We, we got a lot to cover there. Um, you're at 1.1 million followers on Instagram. What, do you have any idea what number you started with at the beginning of the World Baseball Classic? I think, yeah, because people were sending me like screenshots of whoever, I don't know who has the time to do it, but they were looking at before the WBC versus after the WBC. It was like 50 or 60,000 followers, something like that. And then now, you know, <laughs> after that, but like, you know, that was like a big thing that I was getting sent. Like it was like WBC news and then like my Instagram following news too. So I was like, you know, um, shout out to whoever was, you know, had the time to, to do those audits on my, on my, uh, on my Instagram followers, but um, yeah, it was a pretty, I mean, quick and meteoric rise in terms of the social media following. Okay. Dude, you got to ride the wave though. I know that your goal, you need to get healthy. You need to get back on the field. I'm right. with you, but let's capitalize on this thing. You can't be selling hawking some sort of product over in Japan right now. Yeah, we're working, we're working on some stuff, but uh, I mean, shoot. When your uh, when your two best players and, and veterans are, are uh, Nolan Arnado and Paul Goldschmidt, and neither of them on social media, you kind of just want to, you know, you you don't you don't want to do anything too crazy. So you just want to kind of be a part of the team and not not be too social media, or else they'll uh, they'll get on you pretty quick. But um, yeah, I mean, obviously with this, you know, I don't want to be you know ignorant to the fact that there is opportunity out there with this, and you know, I want to try to capitalize and do some fun stuff or whatever it is. But, um, but yeah, like you said, like the main goal right now is uh, getting on the field, getting healthy and playing. So after you beat team USA to win the world baseball classic, did you talk shit immediately? To <laughs> okay, so, right, so we're allowed to, we're allowed to cuss on here. All right. That, that makes me feel oh, yeah. better. Like, all right. All right. Good, good, good. Um, you know, what was weird? It was like, so beginning of spring training, I was just like talking shit to Nolan all the time like hey i can't wait yeah, i'll just mess with him too i was like i can't wait till you're leading off the third inning hitting seventh or eighth for team usa and you're gonna be facing Roki sasaki throwing 100 at you you have no idea what's coming and, and uh you know the whole time i was like messing with him messing with him messing with him even during the wbc i was like can't wait to see you in the finals blah 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 and then when we were actually playing against him like i remember goalie had grounded out to end an inning and whatever it was and i'm fist pumping like i'm fired up but at the same time, during the at-bat, I was like, man, this is kind of weird because these are two guys that have helped me so much early on, you know, in my first, you know, two. Now this is my third season of the big leagues. Like, they've helped me out so much. So it was kind of weird. Um, and then after Goldie and Nolan both came out onto the field to congratulate we, me with my family and stuff like that. And uh, so that was pretty cool. So I didn't talk that much shit. I saw the video of Miles saying that if I brought my gold medal in the clubhouse, that you know there was like eighteen of the guys that would beat you know be my ass or whatever it was. But uh, but um, you know, so I, I had outside of Miles, I don't talk too much smack about it because you know their resume speak for themselves. But um, don't get me wrong, I'm definitely happy that I came out on top and we did. And, and now there's something that I have over them because I mean, with those guys' resumes, there's not much else that I can brag about. You got to bring it up at least once a month. <laughs> all right. All right. I will. I will. I will. That's fair. That's fair. Yeah. Um, so, you know, you you made headlines because you were the first 
player not born in Japan to participate on a, a Japanese national team in the baseball world. Um, your mom is Japanese, and uh, you have actually been tied into Team Japan for well over a decade. It was, yeah. what, in the mid to early 2000s that they paid a visit to you? Did a few of the players stay with you? You got to kind of piece the story together because I'm fucking it up right now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> there it is right there. Um, yeah, so uh, basically their national team came out and played at Dado Field, USC, and played against the U.S.'s high school national team. So, um, obviously, you know, we're, we're, you know, in Southern California, so they needed host families. So we, we hosted two of the players on the team. And, um, and yeah, they stayed with us for like a week or so. And, um, uh, obviously, you know, having my mom, and actually my dad's fluent too. So my mom being born and raised there, she was able to cook and kind of make them feel as comfortable and at home as possible. Uh, my dad being able to speak to him too was, was probably nice to them too. But for me, it was like I had two, what I thought at the time were like these, you know, big leaguers stand in my house and they were like big brothers to me. And I was like, man, these guys are literally the coolest thing ever. And I was that point for them. Uh, Kuriyama son, our, our manager for the team, for the Samurai Japan, was like an announcer and worked on the staff for that high school team. So he remembers like this eight, seven or eight year old kid kind of running and stretching with the team or whatever, you know, never thinking obviously that this would ever come about but um kind of a full circle moment kind of a cool moment and then after that it was like man i all i want to do is be able to be like these guys you know like these guys were the closest thing that i would ever been to to professional baseball players and they're high school baseball players you know and so um yeah that, that was a pretty impactful moment in my life to where um the next year i was in little league all-stars and i don't know if you've seen the video but i said you know i want to represent japan and do all these things and so um that kind of you know catapulted everything for me and it kind of skewed my my i guess like dreams or whatever it was of, of wanting to represent japan because i was able to live and be a little brother to these you know to these studs didn't a few of them make the show wasn't tanaka on that team yeah 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 tanaka was on that team and so like that, that was what was cool it was, it was like saito he won number one and uh he was like the good looking popular one, but Tanaka wore 18, which is what the aces wear out there. But he was like kind of the bigger frame, more of like the projectable one. But, um, and so Saito played in MPB for 10 years for the fighters for Kuriyama for our manager. And, um, I actually rekindled with him throughout this whole process and, you know, interviewed him and, and spent some time with him, which was pretty cool. Um, but yeah, like Tanaka, I remember like when he signed, um, to the U S I was like, man, I like that. It is so cool. Like I literally, bat boy for this guy and, you know like there was a picture that rob was showing earlier of me being able to hang out with him and um so many of those players reached out to me and my family there it is right there me and my family and uh you know it was just so awesome but that was really the first time that like in the fl aaron hicks was on the other team too so uh i can't remember there's probably a couple other big leaders on that team usa team so for me i was you know seven year old kid eight year old kid i was like man this is this is so cool like this is unbelievable um yeah i mean I still remember it, you know, as Dado Field, too, where I went to school, I ended up going to USC. So, um, you know, a lot of weird things that happened during that time. So you hit the fast forward button and you end up playing for Team Japan in the World Baseball Classic. And there's that great shot of you running out to center field where you're kind of clapping a little bit. And it's almost like a movie scene. And <laughs> I can't imagine the chills you got just from this moment. Yeah. I mean, it's. Seriously, it, like you said, it was like a movie scene type deal where it's, I don't know, 50,000 screaming and they got this guy that they don't, they're, they're nervous about, you know, they, they don't really know what to expect and, but they're chanting my name and going crazy. And so, um, you know, that video came out, it was pretty cool. Um, and then later yeah, Shohei hitting a ball almost off his face right there. But, um, but yeah, I mean, it, it was seriously like unbelievable. I mean, the fans out there were so great. Um, you know, the passion behind Japanese baseball was unbelievable. Um, it, it was just, I, I, there are really no words to describe. Like, after it was all over, I was riding back from Miami to Jupiter, just thinking about that ride we were just on, and I was texting Ipe. Um, I was like, I can't, you know, what, how unbelievable was that? Like, it was from the exhibition games in Japan all the way through Miami. It, I mean, it was, seriously was, like, and for the trip to end the way it did, too, it, it just seriously was just, I mean, 
I, I don't know. I, I guess my vernacular isn't large enough to, 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 you know, describe what it felt because it's just something unbelievable. Um, how nervous were you? Pretty, pretty. I mean, honestly, I was pretty dang nervous because uh, going in, my mom tried to prepare me for what it was going to be like. Um, and she didn't want me to like embarrass her or the family name or anything like that. And uh, that's the last thing I wanted to do. And obviously you want to perform in the stage because it's Samurai Japan. And before the first game, our manager said, this is the team that's going to be remembered for a hundred years from now. And um, not, not understanding the cultural full, fully, um, not understanding the language really at all. There's a lot of kind of pressures on me that weren't just performing on the field. It was making sure I was respectful, understanding, you know, everything that was going on, bowing. Um, I mean, you name it, you know, it was just, it's just really a completely different world over there. And so um, that was mainly the part that I was nervous about. Baseball is baseball. I could go over there, you know, play and, and have fun and, and do those things. But it was mainly the, the respect and understanding that, you know, things that, fly here don't necessarily fly over there and vice versa and, and i just didn't want to go over there to a country that i had been in almost two decades and embarrass my grandfather's name my grandma's name my mother's name and her side of the family and so um you know that's a huge thing over there and so um that was like what i was most nervous about because maybe like, like i said like i'd go over there and you know strike out or do whatever but i could go back and look at my at bats and be like okay this but culturally lifestyle wise it's completely different and that was the main thing that i was like man i gotta make sure that you know i don't i basically like i, I don't put a bad name of americans going over there right like this is the first time an american born was going over there so like i i felt the pressure of like i gotta make sure that i'm respectful and the fans like me and the team likes me and the coaches like me so they don't have this skewed image of americans because of this one you know idiot basically going over there it is a lot of pressure no question yeah it's very unsettling. And I, I think about this a lot when we talk about international players coming here. And I don't care whether it's Japan, Cuba, if you're from the Dominican, Venezuela, it doesn't matter. I always tell Americans, hey, it's not that easy. Imagine being dropped off in Venezuela when you're 17 or Seriously. 23 or, or 52 or whatever, however old you are. Right. That can be really, really unnerving. Was there somebody who helped you get through the process? Was there a player on the team? who said, hey, listen, Lars, you're going to be okay. Yeah. Um, so Darvish, Darvish is, is – um, he has the same agent as I do. So going through – like leading up to going to Japan, I was texting my agent, asking him any questions. Um, how should I go about certain things? And he just said, you know, make sure Darvish – you know, Darvish is, is your senpai. He's like the older one. He's the, he's the guy you got to you gotta really lean on. And I remember I was eating – I landed at like five – got to the hotel around eight and then was eating breakfast there again didn't know anybody you know kind of bowed shook everybody's hands you know try to introduce myself but um Darvish walked in and I, I don't know what it was but I just started like shaking like my body was I was like oh shoot like here it comes like this is basically the moment that I need to impress him first impression blah 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 and, um he came over and spoke perfect English um introduced himself said if there's anything that um I need reach out let him know um his interpreter that he uses here was was with me at breakfast after that and kind of hung out with me and so that was that was nice you know like you said like that was the unnerving part where i was like okay i got past basically step one and in, in, in introducing myself and being respectful and having a good first impression with darvish and then after that um the next day i went to the field and um met shohei for the first time and he came up to me and approached me and i was using for the rest of the tournament i was using ipe as a translator who he uses here um and man he i mean can't say enough good words about shohei i mean the most impressive human being that i've ever met on the field off the field the amount of attention that he receives over there and how he handles it and how humble of a guy he is um and what a sense of humor he has too man it, it, it was really like for me I, I came out of that experience and i come back everybody's asking about shohei you know obviously um, for the people that were in the tournament, they got to see how freakish he was in person. But man, off the field, I, I was seriously blown away with with him as a human being. It was it was pretty cool to to see such a superstar handle himself that way. Hey everybody, are you a little bit like me? You don't always know what to get that someone special come Mother's Day. Well, let Lightbox Lab Grown Diamonds do all of the heavy lifting. Lightbox makes lab grown diamonds you'll love with pricing that you will understand. 
From sparkly studs to brilliant necklaces, these gems will make her jaw drop. So whether it's for your sweet mom or your loving spouse, get her a stunning stone from Lightbox Lab-Grown Diamonds. It is a guaranteed W. So this year, skip all the other stuff that you've gotten her in years past where she goes, oh, this is great. Instead, become MVP of Mother's Day with a gift that she will never forget. I want you to use the promo code ChrisRose10. You're thinking Chris Rose 10. Yeah, because we're going to save you 10% off of your purchase. So shop Lightbox Lab Grown Diamonds. Use the code word Chris Rose 10. Get 10% off your purchase. You will shine bright like a diamond. What impressed you most? Um, man, I, like I said, like the, the humbleness, the down to earth. Um, you know, in Japan, if you're older, um, the younger guys have to speak to you in a certain tone with respect because they're older, you know, so you have to respect your elders and Shohei was always asking these young guys like, Hey, you just please speak with me. Like, like I'm an equal, like, don't, don't speak to me. Like I'm, I'm, I'm your senpai. I'm, I'm, I'm you're older than you're like that. I'm older than you. Um, you know, the way he went about his business, the way he worked, but you could go to him at any moment and ask him and then any of the young guys could ask him some and, uh, you know, he could have easily been standoffish. And he didn't know really, he only knew two guys really on the team prior. And by the end of it, everybody was talking to him. Everybody was friendly with him, asking him questions. And um, I was always, you know, hitting with him. And I was trying to learn as much as I could from him. Um, but, man, I mean, just the, his willingness to, um, to to tell me anything that he had, any advice that he had, and then, you know, clips in the dugout like that of, of him just joking around, having fun, man. It was like, I didn't know what to expect, and I, I I came out of that, and I was blown away, really blown away. There was the uh, one pregame clip where Shohei talked to the team about, "Hey, enough, we, we respect those guys over there, but let's make let's put our stamp on this whole thing." Yeah. Is he a shit talker? You know what? He kind of is. He he kind of is, and and that speech was really cool, and I think it 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 um. There was like an elephant. I mean, really, before the game, there was an elephant in the room. But the guys were pretty loose. We're like, all right, we're playing against the freaking Bond Stars, and, and we're the Looney Tunes kind of type deal. You know what I mean? It was like, it was like this lineup is ridiculous. Everybody in our clubhouse knows everybody on their team, and they cannot say the same for us. You know, there's guys on that team that don't know who I am on, on the team, and I play in the same league as them. So it was just like, you know, everybody was kind of loose because they were like, all right, whatever. You know, it is what it is. Like, you were going to go out there and roll the balls out and see how it goes. And then when Shohei kind of gave that speech, it was just like, we've kind of been ignoring the fact that all these guys look up to these guys and they know who they are and everything. And so, um, and then coming from a guy that grew up in the same country that they all did and grew up in the same kind of environment that they did. And quite frankly, he's better than all of them. Um, you know, just simply put is that, um, I think it, it gave a lot of the guys confidence. Like, man, we can go out there, and, you know, and we can do it. And especially if Shohei's saying it. And uh, but, man, when we were playing against Korea and when we were doing all that stuff, uh, you know, he, he he's a humble, he's a humble ass dude. But don't get it twisted. If he needs to talk a little smack or if he needs to get a little competitive, like he's 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 got a fire in him, man. That you know, it it, it don't matter what country he's in. He's he's got that confidence about him too, where it's like you know, what I mean, my shit don't stink, and I'm fucking better than you. So and it's it's sick. It's really cool to see. Vinny Pasquantino, the Royals, <clears throat> is a regular on this show, and he played against you with Team Italia <clears throat> in the quarterfinals, and he said it's unbelievable. You can't go three feet in Tokyo without seeing something Shohei related. Yeah. Is it, I mean, he's the biggest thing we got going in baseball. What the uh, heck is it like over there? You can't go three feet in Tokyo without seeing something or Japan without seeing something Shohei. He can't go three feet in public in, in Tokyo or Japan without a flood of people coming around him. It's it's I'm, I'm telling you like the way he handles himself is pretty unbelievable and he's okay. I asked his interpreter, I asked Ipe, I was like, and he's just cool just hanging out, man, like just being a normal person and not necessarily having to go out and do all the glitz and glamour or whatever it is, you know, so which is nice. You know, he's not going to get himself into any trouble or anything like that. But, um, I mean, shoot, he almost hit a ball off his face in the Tokyo Dome in the back of the dome. And then in between every inning, you look up at the scoreboard and there's a Shohei Otani commercial about something that they're advertising there in, in Japan. <laughs> it's it's ridiculous. And you go, you go to the downtown and every it's like Times Square in, in you know in New York, but in Tokyo. And it's his face here, his face here, him wearing a Grand Seiko watch here. I mean, it's seriously like he's making more money off the field than he is on the field, off the field and on the field this year. And it's 
it's not surprising because you go over there and it's like Vinny said, it's his, his face is fucking everywhere out there. I always joke with him. I was like, yo, if they need like a a Walmart version, half Japanese version of you over there, just let me know and I'll I'll take some of that money. <laughs> I'll take some of that money from you, dude. I was like, I won't cost as much. You know what I mean? Like I won't take any of the if you need a commercial where you need to speak Japanese, uh, take any of that from me. But let me get some of that cheese, you know. So he was joking, but um, yeah, he's the biggest thing, man. And, and like, he's big over here. It's he's Michael Jordan times the Beatles in, in Tokyo. It's crazy. By the way, you said he makes more money off the field. That will stop after this year. I don't know if the number is going to start with a five or a six, but it's yeah. going to be pretty large. Yeah, it's I I know I know and I, and I would I would never I would never talk to to Shohei really about him, but I would ask Ipe. I'm like, you know, we'd be sitting at dinner with each other, or whatever. And I'm just like, man, I I'm so interested to see. Like, I hope he wins the Cy Young and the MVP, and I just want to see what that number is going to be and for how long and and, and where he's going to go. Because I'm like, eh seeing that's going to be, I mean, it's going to be record breaking, you know, and, and it's, it's going to be something that we've never seen before because truly he's an ace and he's a f- middle of the lineup four hitter power hitter. Like, what do you do with that? And so, um, I'm, I'm excited, man. And I'm rooting for him and I'm watching, I I'm, I'm checking in on all the starts, you know, I'm watching now that, you know, I'm not playing right now. I, I was checking in at bats and stuff like that too. So I'm excited for him. It's awesome. Hey, more of the Chris Rose rotation coming your way, but a quick question for you. Are you ready to dominate at the plate this season? Blast Baseball is the number one hitting improvement solution. Blast Baseball swing trainers and swing analyzers attached to the knob of any bat. It provides real-time feedback with each and every swing by automatically sending swing metrics to a smartphone app and generating insights that allow you to analyze and improve your hitting. Visualize your swing with a 3D swing tracer. Compare swings with smart video capture technology. Understand cause and effect with blast hitting insights and learn from exclusive training videos. Now, the metrics, as I mentioned, automatically sent to a smartphone app, generates insights, and boom, you can get better automatically. No matter the weather, location, the season, or the equipment, with Blast Baseball, you can train all year round regardless of the conditions, anytime, anywhere and with new air swings feature you can even train without a ball so i need you to do this go to blastmotion.com that is blastmotion.com enter the code word rose at checkout you're going to save 10 bucks on blast baseball personal swing trainers and swing analyzers go get better today two other things one on a personal note our 17 year old son who's a baseball player is going to japan in August to go play. What is he in for at a high school level over there? I'm sure. I'm, I mean, I'm sure he's going to see those crowds and, and cause Japan loves it. Um, I don't know if you've ever seen any clips of like the Koshien tournament, which is like the national high school yeah. tournament. Over there. It's crazy. Uh, like my mom used to say that she would skip school just to go to that Koshien tournament every year because she's like, it's the biggest thing, you know? So um, I'm, I'm so happy that, he's going to be able to go over there because it's, he's never going to forget it. <laughs> we got guys on this team that um, when they were in high school, they went over on Team USA or, or whatever it was to go play in, in Japan. And, and, you know, they talked about it. And they were like, man, it was awesome. Like, the guys were so great. They're so respectful. So the guys on the other team, they were fun to hang around. But also, you know, he's going to be able to try food that he's never tried. He's going to be able to see things, ride bullet trains, you know, um, experience a, a, a different world over there. And so um, – I would just tell him to enjoy it, soak it all in, and 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 maybe bring a camera or something, you know, because it, it's it's gonna be cool, it's gonna be awesome, and and he's not gonna forget it. There's gonna be some things that uh, scare him off for sure, but there's also, gonna, I mean, it, I I can't speak highly enough about it. It was it, it's pretty it's pretty amazing over there, and it's clean and yeah. it's clean, but don't litter over there. Oh either. yeah, yeah. No, no, he's he he's just excited for the culture. He's like oh, the baseball is whatever the baseball is. I was like, dude. You play in front of like twenty people in high school. <laughs> yeah, be like twenty thousand. Right. What do you mean baseball? Like baseball that. ain't gonna be the base. Yeah, it ain't gonna be like that in Japan. That's for sure. That's for sure. And that's that's what's cool, man. Like it, you go over there and you're like, these people are passionate about the game. Like they care about the game. Like they, you yeah. know what I mean. Like everything about it is is baseball. Once you're stepping into the stadium, and it's so cool because I don't know, man. Like sometimes 
uh, baseball gets a second fiddle. You know, there's a second fiddle to football or whatever it is. But you go to Japan, man, it's it's special. I'm excited for it. I mean, I'm so excited. I can't. Are wait you going more. over there too? I wish I could. It's a work thing. Man. I'm so bummed. I've never been, and I want to go. Oh, really? Yeah. Never yeah, been. you got to go at some point. At some point, right. whenever you can. It's a, listen, it's a hop, skip, and a jump from where I live in L.A. It's easy. Exactly. You know, I, <laughs> right. Just take a weekend <laughs> off, you know? <laughs> right. You yeah. get there. It's like, you know, you take Southwest, you know, you stop somewhere <laughs> right. in the middle of the Pacific Ocean, and refuel, and then we go. Um, the other thing, I think by the end of the World Baseball Classic, most people, even if they were kind of iffy, were on board, even with the terrible injuries to Diaz and Altuve. But there were still some people who were like, it's a joke. It's just a moneymaker for MLB. What do you say to people who still might be skeptical about the World Baseball Classic after your experience? I would just say watch the highlights of it and watch the emotion of every player on every single team and see if they're if they're engaged in it or not. And, um, you know, they asked some guys what means more the World Baseball Classic or the World Series. And some of these some of these Latin players were literally saying they'd rather win the World Baseball Classic than the World Series. And I mean, like in that championship game, everybody on that team is going to make one hundred million dollars or more in their career. Yet they're laying their bodies or whatever on the line in March just to represent their country and play for USA. And you see Shohei Otani and Trout gives a little nod in the, in the last A-B and Shohei doesn't give him anything. And he's fired up. And after the game, he's crying because it's he's playing for Japan. He's playing for the country that 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 groomed him, that he born and raised in, that he's proud to, to wear. And and I mean, the, the, the energy and the emotion that goes into every single one of these games and the nerves that go into these and, and the fans. I mean, the fa- I mean, look at the fans, too. Like, these these aren't normal games. And they're not even normal playoff games, right? Like, we were in LA in 21 and we were in St. Louis in, in 22 for the, for the wild card games. And, and those games are crazy. Right. But you go to Tokyo for the freaking exhibition game in China and that's what it feels like, you know, and you are playing against Korea and it's two countries bashing together that have a little bit of, you know, a little rivalry there. And I mean, for the fans that are, are, are against it, like you said, like, do I wish that, you know, Edwin Diaz and Altuve never got hurt? Of course, you don't want any of that to happen, but, um, you know, stuff, you know, I hurt, hurt my thumb in the first game of the season, like stuff like that is going to happen. And, you know, you never wish injury, but I mean, just look at the players and the fans that are at the games and see the emotion and ask if they care because there's 162 in the regular season, but in that WBC, man, you're playing every game and it's an elimination game. And there's so much pride going into it that, um, I mean, I don't know if a fan can't see that, then they're just stubborn and stuck in their ways because, if you watch that WBC that went on, you know, this this past March, it's it was nothing like I've ever experienced before. And I can't wait because I know the next one's even going to get bigger because of mm-hmm. this that whole tournament and the way that it ended with Trout and Otani on the mound, 3-2 count, ninth inning. Like, it's I, – I, I, we'll see. Because those baseball I, – I, you know, I just think after next after the next World Baseball Classic, there's going to be no more discussion in my opinion because it's going to be so big it's going to be so big and every player is going to be locked in. And, you know, Trout already said he's in for next year and Goldie came out and he was like, man, congratulations. It's unbelievable. You know, and, and it's just, it's just, that's just what it is. And that's just an insight from a player that played in it. Um, so those fans can say whatever they want. The media can say whatever they want, but from you ask any player that, that was in there, they're, you know, they're saying they're all in and, and that's what it feels like, which is pretty cool. Yeah. Listen, you're going to be left out of the party if you don't want to play next time. I get Absolutely. it. America didn't have their top 13 or 14 starting pitchers available. Well, you're going to want to play next right. time. And that's what and that's what was cool was was after, you know, Edwin Diaz's injury, you know, and he's he's with my agent as well. And, and so I, when I talked to my agent, man, he was like, it couldn't have happened to a better guy. Like he said, Sugar Diaz is just the amazing dude, and he feels so terrible. And I, I feel bad for him too. You know, like I don't even know the guy. I feel terrible. But um, when Mookie and, and Mike Trout came out after, and, we're, and those are two of the biggest stars in the game, and they're saying, you know, like they are so happy that they're playing in this, and, and they're, they'd so much rather be facing, you know, these arms that they're facing and playing in these environments as opposed to backfield at bats or whatever it is. You know, it's like it's non-comparable. And if you get out of that without an injury. 
um man you, you like like opening day for me i wasn't i wasn't too nervous because i was like man i just played in the championship against usa and the semis against mexico and playing you know in front of fifty thousand screaming japanese for the first five games anyways and so um you know it's 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 just so valuable and and like you said, you're going to be left off the boat if you don't want in. And, and for these superstars in the game to be saying, like, I'm already committing to next time. And I, I can't wait to play. And I'm so glad I'm playing. And it's the most fun I've ever had playing. Um, those are the names in the game that are going to keep it growing. And I, I just can't wait for the next one. And I'm hoping I get the invite back to Japan because um, I'm already penciling myself in. I can't wait. I love to hear that. Today's episode of the Chris Rose Rotation sponsored by these guys, Shady Rays. I want you to take on the sun with gear that is built to last. Our friends at Shady Rays have you covered with premium polarized shades at a very affordable price. In fact, Shady Rays offers a world-class product just as good as any expensive pair you've ever worn. And we want you to keep money in your pocket. That's not all. Shady Rays offers the most insane protection in the history of eyewear. Every pair of these babies backed by lost and broken replacements. So what does that mean? Well, if you go sit on your shades, like I do several times a year, if you misplace your shades, you have no idea where you put them, you left them somewhere, you let them know they're going to send you a new pair. Well, Rose, what's it going to cost me? Nothing. It's free. They won't even ask you what type of idiot you are. They'll just say, here is a lost or broken replacement. They're all yours. Well, what happens if a happens on day one of purchase it doesn't matter if it happens on day one they're going to send you a new pair by day two and exclusively for our listeners shady rays is giving out the best deal of the season i want you to go on over to shadyrays.com use the code word rose for 50 percent off two plus pair polarized sunglasses we're saving you 50 percent off with two plus pair polarized sunglasses head on over to shadyrays.com you'll look great I appreciate all your insight on the World Baseball Classic. That was phenomenal stuff. But there's a ton of things I want to get to, and I know you got to get to a rehab bus, so I want to get you on that. Um, let's start with St. Louis. Mm-hmm. It's been an interesting start to the season. Some mm-hmm. weird shit has gone on in that clubhouse. Uh, we had the Ali Marmol, Tyler O'Neill issue. When you're a teammate of Tyler's, do you go up to him after something that has played out so significantly in the media, just kind of put your arm around him and be like, Yo, dude, even though I'm a young guy, I'm here for you if you need him. Yeah, I mean, you know what's funny is that I didn't know any of this happened until the next morning. I'm not uh, – I don't I don't really know, like, where – I guess I'm not on Twitter, so I don't see a lot of, like, that news that goes on. Um, and some guys had asked me, like, oh, what happened during that play? And I was like, I don't know. I was watching the ball the whole time. So I literally was, like, out of it. And then I came in the next day – um so there was you could tell there was like a kind of a weird vibe or whatever going on and um and then I ended up finding out whatever before the game and so I I, I hadn't gotten a chance to go talk to Tyler and you know so maybe today will be the first time that I really you know have an understanding and do that so no I, I haven't been able to do that but I wouldn't be opposed to doing that you know what I mean or or asking veterans their opinion I think that would be the best for me is, is asking the veterans their opinion on it and, you know what do you think the best way to go about it because thankfully in, in my shoes this is my third season, like I said, but I've had so many great veterans that I could lean on and, and ask their opinions. And, hey, you know, you've probably seen this or this has happened before. What's the best way to handle it? So that's probably what I would do. But, um, yeah, I mean, stuff happens during baseball season. Tyler's a man. Ollie's a man. I'm not worried about any of that. You know what I mean? I, I know I know it'll sell itself out. But, um, you know, that's just kind of the clubhouse that we got. Thankfully, like I said, we have those leaders. And so – um you know that's their role that they can kind of take but for me I'm still in the young learning phase but you know like I said I'm not opposed to to opening my mouth and saying something like that Uh but um I just I I literally had no idea I I didn't know any of that was going on until the next day so um maybe I should download Twitter or something like that I don't don't know no (laughs) don't you're fine (laughs) I know Uh, the only thing I was disappointed was is that uh, O'Neal had his shirt on during the interview the whole time if I looked like that I would play shirtless. Uh, I hear you. I, I, I hear you. I, I used to tell my buddy, my buddy in, in high school, he got no, he got no play. No, the, the women didn't wear any, they weren't jumping on it. Basically he was jacked. I was like, bro, you should just drive around town with your shirt off. Like that's, that's your best chance you got. And T.O. is even more jacked than that guy. I'm like, dude, if I had that body, it could be 20 degrees outside in St. Louis. I'm walking around with no shirt on, dude. Yeah. Like get out of here. Exactly. Yeah. There, there it is, dude. There it is. Jesus. 
Yeah. Does, does, he, <laughs> he sculpted. does he eat anything that's shitty for him? He must be one of the he's like Gabe Kapler. He takes a piece of chocolate, puts it in his mouth, <laughs> squishes it around, and spits it, it out before he so he does right. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's he's got a strict. I mean, obviously, he's got a strict guy. He's got a good workout routine. You know what I mean? And, and uh, yeah, I mean, geez, I can't even imagine. I can't imagine. Jerk, guys like that, <laughs> unreal. Just like one, this is for a week. I want some pro athletes buy. And by the way, my my wife wouldn't have she a problem if it. I borrowed some pro athlete. No, yeah, not, yeah. not after almost twenty six years of marriage. She's like, Jesus <laughs> Christ. Can we clean it up a little bit, Rose? Um, the other thing about you with the Cardinals is that that is a deep, deep lineup. There, listen, I'm just an outsider. I don't know if there's enough at bats to go around for all the good players are here. Do you ever think about that? Like at some point, somebody might have to go. Yeah, I mean, you know, I I think I really think like that's been the case for as long as I've been up is like, there's just so much depth. And, and me and Gorman were talking about it the other day. And we're like, man, we played against probably two of the best two. uh, I mean, two of the top offenses in all of baseball, right. in Toronto and Atlanta, I'm not to say that there's, there's others around there, but those are two of the top five you'd say, right. You know, five to seven. Right. And so big Gorman's like, man, like these offenses are great. And, you know, we're a great offense too. And he's like, and think about these guys that, that aren't even getting that bats today, you know, like there's guys on the bench on our team that, that, that could be starting or, or being impactful. And, and, you know, if they were in the lab today, if a righty was pitching or if a lefty was pitching or whatever it is, you know? And so, um, yeah, I mean, at some point, maybe something will happen, but um, shoot, who, who, you know, who, who knows, or, or, you know what I mean? Like, like we could keep depth for that reason. You know what I mean? If there's a right-handed pitcher, a left-handed pitcher or something like that, I just know that, um, it's a good problem to have as an organization, you know, to mm-hmm. have so much talent. And so, um, yeah, shoot, I, I, you know what I mean? Like I, being in the situation, it's a little awkward speaking on it, but, uh, you know what I mean? Like I, I, I but you I, understand what I'm getting at here is that, yeah. I mean, you're we're base if baseball fans are thinking about it, guys who are living it have to be looking at it and it's nothing that the organization's doing wrong, but here they've just added 20 year old monster child jordan walker to the equation <laughs> Shit, he ain't going anywhere he's going to be right. getting at bats every day and right. it doesn't mean that that you know you're allowed to be selfish this is your career and I'm, and it's not a shot at the organization in fact i applaud them that they've been able to harness this much depth but sure. dylan carlson who finished third in rookie of the year a few years ago can't get at bats right yeah no i and, and it's honestly it's a credit to the organization because if you look at it like you said like Two, three years ago, Dylan was third in, in Rookie of the Year, and Donnie was third in Rookie of the Year, and Gorman this year, you know, he's, he's looking like the everyday DH, and he's, what is he, 21, 22 years old, maybe 23, whatever it is. Like, everybody's 25 and under, 26 and under, too, that are that are all fighting for these spots. And so that's a cool part of it is is that a lot of us came up with each other and, you know, we're competitive in that nature, but you like to see each other succeed. But um, it's correct to the organization. I mean, shoot, they're drafting well, and, and, I mean, they got a lot of good guys, and so – um yeah shoot I, I know i don't want to go anywhere and i want you know what i mean like i'm all i'm all about the competition and you know what i mean like i, I hope the best man plays every single day and that's just what it is but um shoot love the organization and i'm thankful for them and always indebted to them for for drafting me but um man they drafted me around a lot of good good young players too you know <laughs> you know what i mean like mm-hmm. it's that's just the way it is that's just the way it is um i'm gonna make you smile now Robbie Shiraka, let's throw up those football highlights from El Segundo. Oh man, that's the way to my heart right now. My my dude, you had a Come howitzer back there. This is this is Come no joke. Now. In stride, two time all state. Come on now, small state though. I grew up, you know what I mean. Small state, south of Oregon, uh, west of Nevada. Pretty small state. So I mean, <laughs> what, what does that what does that really mean? You know what I mean? It's it's not a big deal or anything. Yeah. Uh, where could where could you have gone football wise? Um, so Fresno State was big. Uh, Nevada was actually big. Um, Boise State, but uh, I knew I knew <laughs> I knew I wanted to go to to a warm weather school. Um, I really wanted to go to USC, and the plan was to go to USC, play my freshman year of baseball, and then start playing football my sophomore year. Um, my freshman year, they had 
uh, I can't remember if it was, I think it was Kessler. I think it was Cody Kessler. He had just oh, gotten Cody drafted. Kessler. Yeah, right. And then so it was like Max Brown and, and Sam Darnold fighting for that spot. And that was before Sam Darnold was Sam Darnold. So um, I was like, man, you know, maybe I, maybe I got a shot to walk on there. But then I started playing. I started starting my freshman year. And the coaches were like, you ain't playing. You're going to freaking lacrosse Wisconsin in the Northwoods to go play summer ball. So you ain't going to be able to get any reps in the football team. So that kind of cut my dreams, you know, right there. I was like, you know, whatever. Sam ends up going, kills it, wins the Rose Bowl, the Heisman, whatever. Not the Heisman, but, you know, he's uh, third overall yeah. pick or whatever. So it, it was good. But, uh, but yeah, you know, uh, Duke flew out one time to watch me throw. And um, my first receiver was taking the SAT. Second receiver broke his arm. Third receiver was ineligible, was taking classes. Fourth receiver had ruptured his kidney. The Duke, the Duke quarterback coach literally had flown out to watch me throw and i'm throwing a six period pe kids it, it, on the field <laughs> so, I, mean, I mean i don't know what i mean seriously these guys are running in jeans and like osiris is out there you know what i mean like in like you know hoodies and they're running routes and so, it didn't go well needless to say we go in my coach's office after and he looks at me he's like Hey man, you're probably not going to do. And I was like, Yeah, I, I, I think you're right, man. I think, <laughs> yeah, I, think exactly. <laughs> I think he's going. To, he's probably going to go go to Long Beach Poly, check out, play quarterback down there, and offer that guy. Because man, that didn't go well right there. And so, um, I love football, man. It was so much fun. Like nothing like Friday Night Lights. Um, and yeah. a part of me was always like, all throughout college, all throughout the minor leagues, I was like, man. Like, I wonder what would have happened. I wonder what would have happened. But now that we have big leagues, man, it's it's so great. You learn so much, and um, you know, it all it all it all works out in the long run, you know. But uh, but yeah, love love playing football for sure. Well, you know, Wayno, of course, is the biggest fantasy football head I know in oh, in the sport. You're not? Are you in the same league with him? Mm -hmm. Came in last place. You did? Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh God! Yeah. Usually, when you get last place, they have to you have to do something stupid. I know, I know. That's why, like, I'm telling you, these guys are they're pretty good on us, man. Like, and and I think in 21, I was the only person on the team right now that debuted that year. So, I mean, they made me carry the poker chips. They made me get them drinks on the plane and throw away their trash and do all that stuff. But like, it wasn't anything too bad, you know what I mean? And um, I'm a little disappointed because I feel like that rookie hazing and we dressed up last year when we went to San Diego and did that. But I mean, like, I'm a guy that I'm, I'm, I'm the third child of three. So it's like, you know, I got pounded on my whole life. So I'm good with whatever, but they're pretty, they, they're pretty easy on me. And I'm, I'm a little disappointed because I hope obviously to have a successful career. I, I'm, you know, hope to be able to, you know, be a veteran one day and you know i want to be a i want to be a fucking dick to these young guys man i want to be like you know what man, do this you know what i mean <laughs> carry my shit you know do all this but no. now it's like i can't even do that because these guys aren't making me do anything so uh but yeah these, these vets are great they're awesome yeah the um the, the best story i've heard about finishing last i forget which writer told it on social media so he finished last he had to go to an ihop and stay there for 24 hours but he could knock off an hour by eating eight Every pancakes. Day. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, if he, if you eat eight pancakes, you only have to stay there for 16 hours. Right, it sounds like, like, oh. it's It sounds easy. But then when you think about it, you're like, all right, imagine eating fucking 12 pancakes and you still have to be in an IHOP for 12 hours. You know what 12 I mean? hours. <laughs> it's ridiculous. It's ridiculous. Yeah. So I'm hoping this year, if, if I get invited back to the league, because I don't know if they're going to let me – back in the leagues that terrible performance last year but um i'm hoping that we have to uh we set a precedent of last place has to do something yeah you need to that's fun but i will set you up with my 17 year old all he does is fantasy oh is that outside right of school and baseball he's yeah yeah, yeah he'll hook he's you nasty. up like, yeah he's good i mean he will he bothers the shit out of me he'll, he'll wake up after after sunday and he'll go i think i know who i'm gonna get on the waiver wire on wednesday yeah. it's like don't you have like chemistry or something? You have to, <laughs> yeah, you right? You know, hey, as long as you Can't swing it, you can throw it. You don't have to worry about chemistry, man. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'll give you my uh, NFL team. We asked a question on baseball today, which is our daily baseball podcast I do with yeah. Trevor Blue. Somebody sent in a question: uh, Active players. I need a quarterback, a running back, a tight end, and a wide receiver. 
just from baseball players that would make the best NFL offense. So All right, well, I'll put myself I, next to you. Okay, well, why don't you tell me who you'd put at each position? All right, I'm putting myself at quarterback, receiver, um, receiver. I'm probably going. I mean, I'll probably go Mookie because I've seen him run some routes on social media. And he's got to play the slot though at five. But that's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. He could be a guy that could play the slot or motion out or whatever. They're playing man to man, have the linebacker on him, and then you motion him out. Boom, boom, boom. You got one on one on the outside. Um, Hold on. Would he have been better than those PE kids in you know from sixth period? Who I, I would say that. I would say that Mookie Betts is probably a better athlete than those sixth period PE kids. Okay. Hey, you never know though. You know what I mean? You never know. Um, right. Possible. Running back. It's it. I don't want to go basic with this. So was it quarterback, running back, receiver, is that tight it? end, and tight end, okay. tight end. That one's obvious to me. Is it? Yeah. So who's the biggest dude in the league that can run? Oh, uh, Judge. Yes. Yeah, you're probably right. Come on. I was gonna say something. Who's guarding that in the seam? That's fair. Maybe Stan. Maybe Stan's guarding them. Stan was a stud in high school too. Yes, he was. He was gonna go to USC. Right. So you know what? I'm not gonna go judge. I'm gonna go Stanton instead and go Stanton that tight end instead. Okay. All right. Um, And then I'll go uh, running back. Running back. I won't I won't go uh you know, I, I always said this when he was younger. When he was younger, he's still obviously in his prime, but the way Mike Trout runs, he runs like the like in, in terms of like head first, low to the ground, like he yes. runs like a like a bulldozer, you know, like he is thick. Bro. And he's thick and right. And it's like some of those guys where it's like you don't want to meet that guy in the hole full head of steam. Ty, 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 kind of kind of runner, you know? Yeah, right. And so I don't want to go basic and go Mookie and Mike Trout, but I mean, shoot, maybe they're the best at Fine. this. They're just freak athletes. So I'll probably right. go. So, but, well, I put you on the spot here. I'll tell you who I went with. Yeah, let's see. Uh, running back, I went Bobby Witt Jr. Because he actually was the ah! fastest guy in baseball metrically last year. Yeah. And he's bigger than Christian McCaffrey. You don't realize that, but he's bigger. Wow, that's a good pick. Okay. Wide receiver, Byron Buxton. Oh, that's a good pick. That's a good pick. That's a good yeah. pick. Dang it. Yeah, you, yeah, yeah, yeah. You got no, I want a guy that can track the ball. Um, I went judge at tight end. And then quarterback. I totally went off the board because I don't think he played. He, I know he didn't play football in high school. But I know he, even though he's a pitcher, he also played shortstop. So I know that he can move around. I've seen him hit. He can do a lot of stuff. Hunter Green. Oh, uh-huh. I mean, you could probably you could probably throw it a mile. I thought you were gonna go. You know, I thought you were gonna go there. I thought you were gonna, based off your description, I thought you were gonna say Zach Granke because you've seen him hit, you've seen him move around, he used to play shortstop. I was like, wow, is he really okay. gonna go Zach right here for quarterback? But yeah, well, fifteen Green. years ago, he's a great athlete, Zach Granke, a oh, phenomenal I, athlete. I've heard he's a phenomenal athlete, and that's why I thought you were going there. But yeah, yeah, no. Well, I went Hunter Green because the guy throws at one hundred five miles an hour, but. <laughs> <laughs> he's also he's bigger than Josh Allen. Oh, he's, he's huge. 6'5", yeah, he's... 242, and Josh Allen 6'5", 237. Yeah, he's huge. I don't know if he's got two time All State on his on his resume, but you know you, you, you can pick whoever you want. Go ahead. Yeah, that's fine. <laughs> <laughs> my bad. I should have I should have talked to you before putting my my team out. So that was good. Um, I need I need to get you going because you need to hit a rehab bus because I want to see you back on the field. I mean. But this yeah. was a blast. You are a uh, – everybody became big fans of you during the World Baseball Classic, but you're a really good dude. We wish you the best of luck in, in your career. Uh, and by the way, I know that you lost the rock, paper, scissors with Arenado, and that's why you had to join us and not him. But tell him, <laughs> it's not that bad a show, right? No, man. I'll, I'll put in a good word. I'll put in a good word. Hopefully hopefully I mean, uh, he'll, he'll join next time, man. Hopefully he'll join next time. Yeah. 
I've only been interviewing him since he was a, a baby in the league, you know? Yeah, right. I, mean, I know. Hey, sometimes, you know what I mean? Sometimes people get comfortable, you know what I mean? And that's, that's just the kind of guy he is. Maybe he's comfortable after seven straight, you know, 30 and a hundred and all stars, silver sluggers, gold gloves, kind of gloves, you know what I mean? You name it. But, um, you know, sometimes you need the young buck to kind of, you know, whip finish shape. So I'll do that. Absolutely. For you. Yeah. Well, that's what we, we wanted to get to know you. You did great, but you, you pass along to Arenado from Chris Rose. You can't big league a big league interviewer. That's right. You're not doing that. That's right. Okay? I got you. Awesome. I hope you had fun, man. Yeah, I know. This is great. Thank you so much. This is awesome. We appreciate it. For our one-of-a-kind producer, Robbie Scirocco, and Lars Nootbaar of the St. Louis Cardinals and the WBC champion, Team Japan. I am Chris Rose. We'll see you next time on the Chris Rose Rotation, a production of John Boy Media.